So now, let's add a little formatting to our cap table to make it easier to understand. What I like to start with is I like to add, put these in the middle, these headlines, and I like to put them in a box. You can do whatever you want, and this is just for me to follow along as easily as possible. So I'll go down here, put a big box around that, and put a box around that. So that's how we're looking right now. Then we can label this right now as fully diluted ownership. Put a box there, make it look good. Also, the other thing that I do in my cap tables is put every input in yellow. So you know what you can change and you know what you can't change. If it's yellow, you can play with it. If it's not yellow, you can't play with it. So what do we do here? We have to make sure that we're, we equal 100 in our fully diluted ownership. No matter what, this has to equal 100, which it does. And, there, and it doesn't need to be 100.00 anything. It needs to be 100 flat. But we have the beginnings of what's looking like a pretty decent cap table. So say that you need to raise some money. What do you do and how do you make that work with your cap table? What you would do is you'd insert three columns over here and you name this series seed cost, series seed shares, and then I have a last one that's called AD shares for anti-dilution shares. And I'll just go ahead and put it in there for future calculations. So let me make these look a little bit better. And what are we doing here? So if you receive investment, it's probably not going to be from the CEO. It's probably not going to be from the CTO. It's probably not going to be from the COO. So what we have to do is we have to insert some, some rows here, come down right here and say the series seed investors. And let's call this a lead angel, where the lead angel is gonna be the only person investing in this round. So how much is the lead angel investing? Let's do this. Let's say they're investing $200,000. So how many, how many shares do they get for that $200,000? We don't know. What that's based upon is the pre-money valuation and the share price. And so what we have to do is we have to calculate the share price for this, uh, this round. So let's come down a little bit, go in here and type in series C share price calcs. I like to merge those just so it looks a little bit better. And now let's type all of these different line items as these are all things that we're gonna need to figure out. Founder shares, pre-money, valuation, invested funds, post-money, valuation, series, seed, ownership, post-money, option pool, Post, money, founder, percentage, total, shares, post financing. And if this seems like a lot, don't worry, we're gonna figure out how it all works and what, all, what everything means. Founder shares, and these are just kind of check calcs down at the bottom that I like to do. Investor shares. Option pool shares, and then share price calculation. 
So the first thing I do is just best fit this column just so it looks a little bit better. Put a nice box around this and then we get started. So founder shares. Well, we know what founder shares are. They're these shares over here. So we can just reference this cell, the total shares of common stock that the founders have before this round of financing, which that shouldn't change. We'll also go ahead and go in here and let's clean up all this real quick so that there's less yellow on the board, just to make it look a little bit better. There we go. That looks good. So then we have a pre-money valuation. Well, the pre-money valuation is going to be something that we input. In this case, let's say it's $4 million. Now, how much is being invested? Well, we actually know how much is being invested. It's this number right here. But let's sum that number. Because if we want to add any more anybody else to the round, let's have it down here at the bottom. So let's sum this number right here and sum all the stuff in this column because we don't know where we're going to input from. So that now is the $200,000 we're looking for. Post money valuation. Post money valuation is just the pre-money valuation plus the amount of funds that were invested. So in this case, the post money valuation is 4 million plus the amount of funds invested. Easy, 4.2 million. Now, the series seed ownership. The ownership that the series seed investors receive as a result of their investment is easy to calculate too. They invested $200,000 at a $4 million pre-money valuation, which means they have a $4.2 million post-money valuation. So in order to calculate their ownership, you just take the $200,000 of invested funds and divide it by the post-money valuation. So in this case, they're buying a little less than 5% of the company. Now, what kind of option pool do they want post money? Well, we don't know, but we can put something in. This is something that is changeable and is one of the keys for round modeling and because it makes such a difference in what the, what the founders turn up with, especially in the early stages. So let's say that the angel investors want there to be a 15% post money option pool. So the post money founder percentage in this scenario is 100, 100%, so one minus this, what's being bought from the series seed, and then minus the option pool. So after this is all said and done, the founders will have about 80.24% of the company. So now we gotta figure out what's the total shares post-financing. The total shares post-financing are what is, how many shares are outstanding after the financing closes. So in order to figure that out, what we have to do is we take the shares that are outstanding before the financing and then divide it by what percentage of the company those shares now represent. So post-financing, there will be 1.246 million shares outstanding of the company. So now let's do some check calcs. Check calculations are just making sure that we sum up from the opposite way. If the founders own 80.24% of the company and the founders shares equals a million, then 80.24 times the total shares outstanding post-financing should be a million. So the investor shares, this is how many shares are issued to that lead angel or to the investors that make up that $200,000 that that's being invested. So we multiply the 4.76% times the total shares post-financing and we, we give the investors 59,347.18 shares. The option, option pool shares should be 15% times the total shares post-financing is 186,000. So now let's do this. Let's sum up these three things here and make sure that they equal this total shares post financing should equal the sum of these three things. It does. So we did that correctly. So now we have to ca calculate the share price in this round of financing at this pre-money valuation 
with these amount of shares currently outstanding, with this, this amount of funds invested, what is the share price? Well, the share price is equal to the invested funds divided by the shares received for those funds. So, in this scenario, we invested $200,000 and we got 59,347 shares. So that gets our share price of 3.37.